This is BS. This is BS. Why are we here? I am going to call corporate. <laughs> Who the hell gave this guy a video camera? Welcome, I guess, into another edition of BSing with Big Nate. <sighs> Good luck. Welcome into another edition of BS with Big Nate. I'm really excited for this episode. Um, clearly, lately, the series has become uh, uh, an homage, a dedication to those that I am living vicariously through. So, naturally, I am joined by Drez and Kirsty on the what I'm calling the Great American Adventure. I don't know what they're calling it. We're going to find out. Drez, Kirsty, hello. What's Hi. up? What's up, man? I, I love seeing you holding down the fort. I haven't seen the studio in so long. I, it brings back memories. I'm not going to lie. Well, first and foremost, I, I, I am keeping the seat warm, uh, ready for your return. Secondly, we have not changed anything as much as possible because I, I know how uh, earth shaking that can be. Yeah, well, I, I, I did have expect. I'm sure I'll come back and I'll notice a couple of things out of place or this is new or that's that's changed but uh it's, it comes with the territory i'm sure that's maybe you should make it like a competition and, and see if there's anything that you can strategically place that he won't notice that would actually be quite fun that that'll be our, we've actually got pictures uh of the way it was when drez left <laughs> so we can put everything back exactly where it was <laughs> like it's very strategic the angle i've chosen here um so first and foremost i, I want to ask where are you guys currently we are currently in Redding, California, which uh, I guess you could do a quick little Google search or whatever, but um, it's near this, it's near a national park. Basically, we've, we got one of those American the Beautiful National Park passes, and uh, we picked that up. I guess it wasn't until Texas when we got that. We did a couple other parks. We just kind of got lucky and didn't have to pay, but then finally we got it, and then once we got that, that's sort of almost been curving our, our plans because like parks na the national parks are like pretty much always open uh it's easily like social distance and stuff you're outside you're you know we do like to hike and everything so once we got that that's kind of what we've been planning around so obviously california has a bunch of them and what's the one it's a volcanic something yeah so we're closest now to lassen volcanic national park but we have spent the last couple of weeks like going through the big ones like yosemite and uh, sequoia. sequoia joshua tree mm -hmm. like yeah the, california really is the the kind of the national park king i think yeah no i mean it, it's a huge like it's a really big state you you can't really easily drive it necessarily in a in one day not comfortably and and that's kind of been one of my favorite things of course i've been following the, the journey on instagram uh and, and Yosemite really stuck out to me, but Joshua Tree stuck out to me as well. Yeah. So I, I've got to ask, what, what have been your favorite stops so far? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, if we're talking, are we talking, we're just talking everything? Everything. Everything. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess I might as well bring it up. I, I was debating which t-shirt to wear. I, I opted for the I get around uh, Winnebago jam, but um, but uh, I did get a t-shirt at the Rainbow Barn Grill, which was a, a, a key stopping point for me when we went to LA. We were just there for a day, but I was just like, I got to go to the Rainbow. Um, so that was a highlight for me. But as far as parks go, I think Zion was probably the most beautiful. Uh, it was just just absolutely gorgeous there, um, and we went on some cool hikes and stuff. What about you? you? You got some highlights? Yeah, I loved Big Bend National Park actually, which is like way down south uh, in Texas. Like we actually like could look across the river into Mexico. Yeah, I actually, I I, swear, I braved, I braved <laughs> the what was it, the Rio Grande? Yeah, I went across. And and we legally entered Mexico, but you know that's that's you probably key. shouldn't put that on the keep radio. that on the DL. <laughs> it really was just like it was it was about this deep. I literally yeah. just rolled up my pants and I could walk. You could walk across, so I don't think it was anything too big of a deal. But there was some beautiful scenery there as well. And then it's been nice actually just moving from like different climates, different like um, you know, kind of 
its views it's like down south it's more kind of like arid and desert like and now moving up california like this is northern california like it's really lush again we're seeing trees so it's just nice just just constantly kind of moving and, and seeing change like yeah i mean america's so big like it's especially hitting the parks you really see just the vast difference and and as far as like climates and landscape that that the u.s has to offer man it's pretty crazy really yeah so the, there are a couple of things i want to dissect there first and foremost the rainbow bar and grill <laughs> thank you very much for getting pictures of the uh, the lemmy bust and the statue and everything and 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 keeping that uh that that legacy alive um i also want to ask i probably asked you this before you left and and i didn't really consider it but I, i'm considering it now how much like is your itinerary planned or is it just kind of on a whim like hey let's go to yosemite today i'll let her take that because she's she's <laughs> planned the entire thing i drive <laughs> and she just tells me where to drive <laughs> Yeah, I've definitely got, I'm, I'm definitely the planner in this relationship. Um, but we have like a loose idea of, of where we, where we're going, but we try not to plan too far out, maybe only like one or two weeks, just so that we do have that flexibility to change, you know, course, if we do hear of something else that's really cool, or, you know, we just spot something on the map that maybe we didn't originally. But yeah, generally, we were like, come down south to cat to stay with the sun. Uh, go along south, come up California, and then we're gonna hit. Um, where else we're gonna hit? We're gonna hit like Yellowstone, another obviously massive national park, and then come back down to Utah and head. Then then we'll start heading east towards Virginia again, and then we're just trying to find bits and pieces that kind of pique our interest on yeah, the way. Like like we know we're gonna hit like Denver because I got like a cousin there yeah. and some people there. Um, and we know like, yeah, we got like a certain parks here and there that we want to hit, but for the most part, it's, it's kind of loose and just looking at like the different apps and seeing like where we can stay. Yeah. That's another big thing. It's like, you know, it's great having the freedom of a camp, freedom of a camper, but you just can't just plop it anywhere. Like you really have to kind of find places and people that will accept you in with them. Mm -hmm. that, that's another thing I kind of wanted to dig into is, is the logistics behind it. Um, Earlier today when we were talking, Drez kind of brought up that, that you know, we've got a park, we've got to get set up and, and kind of get situated. So what does that look like? like what's, what's the process when you, once you land, if you will? I guess it really depends on where we're landing. Um, so like right now we're staying at a Boondockers Welcome, which has really been a great resource for us. You know, it's like an app, you, you be a member, and it's basically – for the most part, it's just people that either have have rigs themselves or like are are just appreciate and are cool with the you know traveling lifestyle, and they just offer you a free place to stay. Uh, a lot of them have hookups, like here, the place we're staying now. We're we're gonna have water, we're gonna have power, um, and so. But I just you never you never know when you show up, you know, like where to park and what to do. So you kind of gotta feel it out. Some are better than others, but um, like right now we're essentially just parked like in this people's driveway in this nice subdivision. Um, <laughs> and we're just, uh, yeah, we're just posted up here. <laughs> but sometimes it's like maybe, you know, uh, like a property, like on a farm or something as well. Like we've been like in gorgeous farms in the middle of nowhere, that, you know, maybe have like ponds and forests around. Mm -hmm. um, and we also use harvest hosts um, which are wineries, breweries, and farms that, again, will just allow you to come and stay as long as you come and check out their shop or their brewery. Obviously, breweries aren't a problem with works, this guy it here. It works pretty well. <laughs> they pretty well. enjoy his custom. But, and generally, it's, yeah, wineries and breweries. But, uh, we, like, last night, we actually stayed at a rice farm. And, uh, and so, yeah, we just went in, bought, like, a $5 bag of brown rice, <laughs> and, uh, which was awesome because it was, like, on our grocery list anyways. And then... Uh, and yeah, we got to stay in this nice, beautiful, like, and looking out over like an awesome little rice farm. paddies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so. I mean, that's another thing. Um, as as far as eating go goes, obviously, there's there's restaurants of plenty across the country. Uh, how, how many nights a week are you cooking in the in the RV? I'd say about seven. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I mean we yeah we seriously we we eat in for the most part. That's how we've been able to keep not only our uh, spending in check, but also like, you know, it's healthier and stuff like, 
thankfully my mom got us one of these ninja foodie like multi air fryer and all <laughs> it has like 11 functions and that thing's just awesome and we've just been playing with that different recipes and and whatnot and yeah i mean like there's definitely a lot of good eating so you know every now and then we'll, we'll like you know we'll take advantage if we hear like oh you got to go there or whatever but for the most part i mean i'd say yeah maybe we eat out what, once a week yeah once or maybe twice a week yeah once or twice a week probably yeah. I basically told Jazz, I was like, you can choose. You can either drink a few days a week or we can go out to eat a few days a week, but you can't have both. Which one would you like? So you know which one win on that situation. <laughs> it's the right choice. It is. It really is. I mean, if you, if you cook, you can drink while you cook and then you don't have to go anywhere. You don't need to appoint a DD. Mm -hmm. It all adds up. The, the math is there. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so... Uh, has there been a place where you guys have, uh, um, you know, because you're dealing with that kind of, and, and I don't want to call it, it's probably most relatable to people as like an Airbnb style experience where it's kind of this grassroots effort. Has there been a place where, you know, you've booked to stay and then you've shown off and been like, yeah, you know, I don't, we might get murdered here. <sighs> there was that yeah there was one place in louisiana yeah, but we didn't book that that was just like one of those spots where it's like hey it looks like it's cool to park here no well we didn't oh it, yeah no, you're right. it was it we was did. like no, yeah, we, did. RV we did we did have to pay like 10 bucks or something didn't we need our accommodation but yeah we it was a little sketch it was really sketchy and then also like there another uh, resource for RVers is you can generally stay at most walmarts um, oh, you know, gosh. as long as you go shopping, but we had an incident a few weeks ago. Cause obviously, you know, we don't know these areas. Like we don't, we don't know if it's a good or bad area. So we just showed up in this Walmart, did our shopping, like settled down for the night. And then it turned into like a boy racers car park. Like there was just all these like, like no gangs joke. and ca of cars. There was like our 50 show. cars. They were flying. They were like flying past our RV. We thought they were going to like crash into us. Bikes. Like we bikes motorcycles oh like i mean it was a straight up like it was like an impromptu fast and furious thing or whatever <laughs> it was like crazy and i was and like we couldn't sleep it literally sounded like we were right next to a racetrack it was oh my goodness it was brutal but the best part of being an rv is we just, we, we just packed up it was midnight but we just packed up and moved on like to another place yeah we just drove road, like 30 minutes up like, the road to another spot that we, yeah, we were, were able to park at so we don't feel good here <laughs> that's still so frustrating you and far yeah. between though like we really haven't had many situations or circumstances where we have felt uncomfortable so mm -hmm. thank no. you everyone <laughs> i feel like being on a journey like that um i mean where, where you're going and i i had my own experience in high school we were doing it in a minivan we were camping everywhere and and that was a nightmare i i feel like what you guys are doing is not necessarily <laughs> the exact same case because we were in a minivan, we were camping, and it was just the weather, the elements, and you guys don't necessarily have to brave that. Um, I, I, I'm assuming you're timing everything out based on the weather, so when you hit Denver, it probably will still not be snowy or cold. Yeah, we were actually, we were looking at it because we were like, oh, well, we could hit it. It's pretty central, so we're like, we could come away that way. But then my cousin was basically like, yeah, next week we're supposed to have like like a lot of snow. So I would maybe hold off and come on the way back. So yeah, that, this, that was in March when we first went to yeah, go in there. So at this point, we're going to be going at like, you know, I think it'll be like mid-June. So it should be fine. We'll be there in like a month or so. Everything should be thawed out. Mm. Well, um, there, there are some other news that, uh, that has come out of this trip. And, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about it. Um, <laughs> What's that? I, what happened? I, I really don't know how to delicately do this. So uh, I just want to wish you guys congratulations and uh, many happy returns. Uh, Drez and Kirsty engaged. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, the way you, you did that well, they're like, wait a minute, what's, uh, what are they announcing? This could be a couple of things. But... I think he was waiting for you to jump in. Oh, was I supposed happy? to do that? Yeah, yeah, it's the delay. It's the delay. You bailed out. I, I don't, uh, I never know how to do the, uh, I'm as ham fisted as I come. <laughs> No, no, thank you so much. No, thanks, Steven. thanks. Yeah, I mean, you know, I figured this uh, this trip would probably seal the deal, and it's been so great so far. And we were actually, you know, we've been doing the RV thing, but we did duck out uh, to Aruba for a little, you know, anniversary kind of deal. And and it was we have had such a good day; everything was great. So I decided to 
go ahead and <laughs> lock this one down. So. See, Thank, thankfully, she accepted. Kirsty says she's the planner. I, I, knowing what I know about Drez, I, I'm going to go ahead and out you. I'm pretty sure you knew what you were going to do. <laughs> I might have had a, a rough outline, but uh, yeah, I didn't. I, I wasn't going to let her plan that one. <laughs> that would have been a bit actually crazy. no. That that's not okay. <laughs> well. We are all excited for you. I, I, I will tell you this. Uh, there, were, there were running bets as soon as you left um, how long it was going to take you to propose to her. Oh, really? oh, is that what it was? You won. Yeah. Yeah. No, was, hey, was, I don't know if any of us won. Um, <laughs> Kirsty and Drez won. That, that's who won. Yeah. We're the winners. <laughs> but, but we definitely said it was, it was probably going to happen. And uh, here we are. So uh, congrats. And uh, really excited for you guys. Uh, what is your plan for the next few days in Redding, okay. California? Cool. So we're going to hit that volcanic park thing tomorrow. Um, and then we're going to be here. Oh no, we're leaving the next Yeah, day. we're just here for two nights. Yeah. Uh, and then we're actually heading to uh, a winery because it's someone's birthday. So Maybe. maybe I don't know. <laughs> it's not actually my birthday. It's dicey. It depends on which what you subscribe to. Yeah. Um, so yeah, honestly, I, I really don't even know. She's been kind of keeping me in the dark for the yeah, stuff coming up. Can't tell you too much. There's a few surprises in this next uh, few days. So, well, happy early maybe birthday, Drez, and uh, maybe, maybe you guys have some fun, and uh, I'll check back in with you in a little bit. Sounds good, man. And hopefully we can. Uh, sort some sort of beer scenario out and we can maybe do a Bruce Day Tuesday. I don't yeah. know. What's, what's, I, up I gotta, what's up with that? I got to talk to Huck. He He's falling apart, man. Without you, he is falling apart. Well, I know he's busy with a move and all that sort of jazz. So he's probably... Uh, he's getting his hot tub hooked up right now. So I know, I know his life's particularly it's difficult. It's on Facebook, he's got a hot tub. His new spot, oh, so. nice. We'll have to check that out when we get back. <laughs> All right. Well, we look forward to seeing you guys again. And uh, thanks for joining me. Yeah, man. It was good seeing you guys. And uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Rock on 105.3 The Bear, baby. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>